Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. I'm, G I'm your host Jeevan Toki. Today's uh, topic is on cryptocurrency and your clients. So I'm joined by uh, Shane Stevenson, who is CEO of Cointry and Jess Rendon, who is head of operations at Cointry. Welcome guys. Yeah, thanks Jeevan. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Thanks for having us. So today we've got a yeah, super exciting, uh, I guess, topic and I guess a lot to go through. So let's make a start. Okay, so for everyone, today's session will be recorded. So you will be able to find this on BGL's YouTube channel and we will send out a link to all attendees. So if you do have to drop out any time, don't stress. All attendees are, oops, um, all attendees are on listen-only mode. So you will, won't be able to ask any questions by your microphone or telephone. However, you can answer or uh, input any questions into the Q&A panel. Um, we do pretty, like any questions and we will come to um, questions there at the end. Okay, so all the information in today's webinar is a general nature only. So please uh, take the time to read the disclaimer there on screen um, and please get professional advice before acting on anything that is presented in today's webinar. Okay, so for today, we'll cover uh, crypto and the ATO very quickly. I'll then pass over to Shane and Jess who are gonna go through uh, Cointree and how to get started uh, through asset diversification. We'll both discuss, I guess, the, simple, the integration between Simple Fund 360 and Cointree, and then we'll go to, uh, through to Q&A. Okay, so kick things off, let's go through a little poll. Uh, so we'd like to know a little bit about yourself and what you know about cryptocurrency. So I'm gonna launch a uh, poll now. So we'll give you just a minute to go through and answer that. So you should have the two questions there. How much do you know about cryptocurrency? And do you have any clients who currently trade in cryptocurrencies? Shane, how much do you know about cryptocurrency? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully more than most there. What's really interesting already with these results is seeing that almost everyone has heard of and knows about at least a little bit now. It's yeah. uh, things, things have changed so much over the last 12 months and been around for as long as we have since 2013. It's really great to see just general awareness, uh, at least knowledge of of hearing Bitcoin. Yeah. And we'll be diving into a bit about how, uh, a bit more about what it is today as well. But yeah, really interesting results here. Okay, so I'll just close the poll now and share that on screen. Uh, so you can see, I guess, as Shay mentioned, a lot of people have a little bit of knowledge, and I suppose, um, and some people have a sort of great understanding. So it's good to see, probably as expected, in those sort of middle bands there. Um, and a lot of people currently don't have clients who trade in cryptocurrency. So I'm sure that will uh, probably change over the next sort of year or two as well. And I suppose mm -hmm. uh, Shane and Jess do have some great information um, of those coming up as well. So, oops, move up. Um, so let's kick things off there with crypto and ATO. So um, a few different things there. So probably start with the second point first. Um, so the, a the ATO has deemed the cryptocurrency there a CGT asset, and I have included the tax determination here. So regardless of the entity type, I suppose, please look at that. It's not treated as a currency, even though currency is in the name. Um, it is, you know, treated there for CGT purposes, and you treat that similar to how you would in terms of, let's say, listed shares, um, CGT purposes. So that does mean two things. Uh, first one there is, I guess, record keeping. So similar to trading in other commodities or uh, listed securities such as shares, you do need accurate record keeping. So that might be the units that you can either hold, units or bought or sold, um, the actual valuation, and obviously the type of, uh, I guess, broker or platform you are using. Um, so I think Shane's going to cover off, I guess, what's available on the Cointree platform um, a bit later on. Um, in terms of valuations, I guess at 30th of June, you know, the, uh, I think Shane and I were discussing prior to the webinar, you know, Cryptocurrency is available to trade 24 seven. So I guess what the ATO has come out with the valuation there at year end at 30th of June is they will accept, I guess, as at 30th of June, and they haven't listed a particular time, but as at 30th of June, um, they will accept the valuation from any listed broker. And obviously if you are, um, or your clients are using Cointree, you know, the valuation that is available on those reports is accepted there by the ATO. Um, in terms of GST, very similar to that of shares, that GST is not applicable on the actual, uh, I guess the actual purchase or allotment of actual shares themselves. However, if the entity is registered for GST, you can obviously claim that on the brokerage as well that is charged. Okay, 
So going on to, I guess, an introduction now to Coinsbury. So I'll pass over to Shane um, and I guess Jess with her input as well um, about, I guess, what is Coinsbury and an introduction to the platform. Yeah, great. Thanks, Jeevan. Uh, Jess, do you want to quickly talk about us and I'll dive into the asset specification shortly? Yeah, no, thanks, Jeevan. Um, it's great to be here today. For those of you who weren't um, present at one of our previous webinars, we're Cointree. We are a digital currency exchange and we've been established since 2013. So we're Melbourne based for those of you who are joining us from Interstate today. Um, and, um, and we have, a, I guess, really exciting program to run you through today. Um, our platform provides users with the ability to buy, sell and trade over a uh, hundred and actually now over 130 cryptocurrencies. So for those of you who don't uh, know a lot about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin's obviously the primary coin that a lot of people know about, but there's a lot of other altcoins, which we will quickly touch on a little bit later on as well. Um, and just to touch on a little bit of, about regulation, all digital currency exchanges who operate in Australia are required to be registered with Austrac, and that's for um, for AML and and and, um, and and I guess for compliance reasons as well. So we we are of course um, registered, um, and and Austrac obviously our main reporting body in that regard. Um, we also do work with the ATO as well. Um, so that's just a little bit about us, but we're going to I guess touch on quite a fair bit today and any questions that you have please feel free to put them through in the comment box and we'll do our best to answer them throughout the session and I'll pass back on to Shane. Yeah great uh, thanks Jess. Okay let's move on to talking a bit about asset diversification and Bitcoin. Jeevan can you, yeah okay let's have a look. Okay so let's have a quick look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Um, uh, cryptocurrency being a new asset class that is currently drawing uh, significant investor capital I've got a few charts that we're going to quickly run through. We're going to quickly compare uh, Bitcoin against traditional asset classes such as fiat currency, which is uh, like Australian dollars, and also gold. Um, and then look at uh, its adoption over the last 10 years and why it might be of interest to you and your clients. Let's jump to the next slide, Jeevan. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, Bitcoin is designed to be digital money, which means that when we compare the properties of Bitcoin to fiat currencies such as US dollars and Australian dollars. Um, when we compare those key properties, we see it uh, meets and exceeds a lot of what you can do with physical currency. So while it's accepted, durable, um, and can be used for goods and services, um, so can cryptocurrency. Um, and cryptocurrency being completely digital means that it's also global, it's instant, and it's also cheap to transact as well. So we see a large use, use case being for remittance purposes, uh, we're also seeing companies start to embrace it being used for digital money as well. So a great recent example is PayPal, who's recently allowed its 30 million global customers um, to now purchase Bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, and has plans next year to allow merchants to accept Bitcoin transactions. And PayPal is just one of many companies that we're now hearing about really starting to embrace digital currency. So we're anticipating in the next couple of years, mm -hmm. basically what we've seen over the last 10 years is a bit of a foundation getting built up. Um, and the next 10 years are going to be quite exciting for, for digital currency. Uh, then when we compare it against gold, we sometimes hear of Bitcoin getting called digital gold. And it's also been engineered to kind of exceed gold in all, all the important aspects as well. So when we talk about investment, pers uh, inv investment purposes and also asset diversification, people, people look at gold because it's a store of value. Um, and the primarily reason is because it's scarce. Um, and when we look at scarcity, while gold is probably the most scarce of the asset classes that exist at the moment, well, until cryptocurrency came along, we still don't know how much gold there is in the world. So that's why it's here on this chart as moderate scarcity. Uh, when we compare it against Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, Bitcoin's engineered to have an absolute fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoins, um, which means that it's even more scarce than gold. And so what we've been seeing over the last year or so is now um, investors um, starting to consider Bitcoin for that diversification. And I've got a chart that I'm going to show shortly as well. People are now starting to kind of move towards Bitcoin as a store of value rather than gold. Um, let's move on to the next slide, please, Jeevan. So when we look at adoption, Bitcoin's been around for about 10 years now, and we see, uh, I guess, a classic exponential uh, growth in terms of just awareness and adoption. Um, this chart is a couple of months old, and I can say from our own experience, we're seeing record levels of interest over the last few months in particular. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
we provide weekly market updates to our members where uh, via EDMs and also um, video content as well. And all of the recent news pieces that we've done over the last couple of months are around funds, institutions, retail investors, and companies now starting to embrace cryptocurrency. Um, let's jump on to the next slide. Here we've got a chart from Russia, which is um, the first country where cryptocurrency is now exceeding gold in terms of new investment. Uh, this kind of goes back to the story that we've been seeing over the last recent months in particular, where now historically kind of the millennials and young adults have been embracing cryptocurrency pr predominantly more than gold. But now we're starting to see the more traditional investors, uh, hedge funds, uh, investment um, brokers, um, institutions, and also, I guess, companies now considering their treasuries um, in cryptocurrency rather than other asset classes. Um, a great example is a recent story of MicroStrategy that, that is a large US company that has invested $50 million in Bitcoin. And they were recently on, the new, uh, uh, on one of the United States news channels and the, uh, the CEO was basically getting questioned, why would you move your treasury into Bitcoin rather than fiat currency? Um, and we're going to touch on uh, inflation shortly, but essentially it's now companies are now strongly considering, well, if my money is worth less over time, what other asset classes might be a good hedge against that? Yeah. Um, and MicroStrategy has moved their, uh, I believe most or the entirety of their treasury into, mm -hmm. into cryptocurrency. Um, and we are seeing more and more kind of stories of this uh, kind of patterns emerging along this sort of thinking as well. I'll touch on this when we talk about inflation shortly. Uh, let's jump on to the next chart here. In terms of retail investors and just general portfolios, what we see compared to a typical 60-40 portfolio is that any sort of um, investment, uh, no matter how small into Bitcoin, has seen strong performance compared to any other sorts of portfolios. Um, Bitcoin being a new asset class that's only been for, out for around 10 years now um, is the strongest performing asset class. Um, and it's a simple case of supply and demand. Bitcoin uh, being one of the only asset classes with an absolute fixed supply means that the more demand that we see is going to uh, essentially drive up the price. And that's what we've seen recently as well, Jess. Uh, we've seen uh, a new all-time high just over this week. Actually. Yeah. So we saw a spike in 2017, which uh, if anyone kind of knew of Bitcoin back then, you would say that maybe that, that, that demand back then was driven a bit more by hype. But this time around, it feels a bit different. We're now seeing, you know, again, like the companies like MicroStrategy. So there's, you know, people actually taking proper risk assessments, strategizing, all right, my treasury or my investments might be better placed in cryptocurrency than rather some of these other asset classes. So this time, the growth um, in terms of price feels a bit more natural and a bit more grounded. Jumping on to the next uh, page, please, Jeevan. Another reason why people are turning to cryptocurrency is a hedge against inflation. So uh, fiat currency is controlled by governments and can be printed as required. And what we've seen this year in particular is record um, amounts of money printed in the United States, also Australia, and just worldwide as well. Uh, and what uh, interesting fact is that the money printed this year alone exceeds the entire supply of money in 2009. Uh, which is just crazy to think about. And this chart really highlights just the spike in uh, growth here. I spoke about MicroStrategy before, and part of their reasoning why they're moving their treasury into Bitcoin rather than holding it in you know, uh, US dollars is because um, their team sat down and they realized, okay, with the amount of money that's being printed this year alone, our, uh, if we hold our treasury in uh, US dollars, it's going to devalue 10 to 20% year on year for the next couple of years, mm. um, essentially halving. Their, their reserves. Um, so it was a pretty simple decision for them when they were looking at other asset classes to diversify and to hedge that risk against. Uh, Bitcoin was the clear winner for them. Uh, and we're seeing more stories emerge of that on a, on a on the, uh, I don't know, weekly basis yeah. with our news pieces. Mm. Uh, so to recap, G, yep, thank you. Um, so to kind of look at why it might be appealing to different types of people, um, Bitcoin is seen as digital money, digital gold, a hedge against inflation and also naturally being a, holy, a highly volatile asset. It's also used for investment purposes for um, people who have that risk appetite as well. Uh, we see all sorts of, well, the whole variety of traders with our platform. Mm. Um, 
And, and this is also why we're starting to see, well, 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 we have seen over the last couple of years, self-managed super funds in particular start to embrace cryptocurrency. Uh, and I guess the fact that now when you lodge your tax return, there's now a cryptocurrency field kind of highlights just how much adoption and how much people are actually strongly considering cryptocurrency uh, for their investments. Nice. That's, uh, that's my little uh, recap there of asset diversification. Uh, over to you, Jess. Yeah, thanks, Shane. I, I can see we have got a couple of questions. I don't know whether we wanted to quickly answer those whilst we're in this section, um, Jeevan, at all. I'm just having a quick look. Oh, yeah, if you want to take them out, go for it. So. Yeah, let's just have a quick look because I think there's a couple of questions here. Okay, um, I'll touch on... Okay, so uh, one of our viewers has pointed out not all current cryptocurrencies have a fixed supply, and that's very uh, that's a very important yeah. fact as well. So Bitcoin is the brand name of cryptocurrency when we talk about digital or cryptocurrency or digital currency. Bitcoin's kind of that first thought, and especially as we talk about mass awareness and adoption, people are going to look to Bitcoin before other um, cryptocurrencies. But mm. just touched on before, there's hundreds and even thousands of cryptocurrencies, yes. all with different purposes. Uh, some are store value like Bitcoin. There's other ones like Ethereum, which more around smart contracts. There's ones, um, there's what's called stable coins as well. So instead of like having to, you know, use a foreign exchange service to now get US dollars, I can actually buy cryptocurrency that's pegged to a US dollar. Yeah. And we're starting to see those kind of surface for, uh, you know, Australian dollars and other, uh, other fiat currencies as well. Yeah. Um, there's a whole range of cryptocurrencies. So yes, yes, not all of them are designed to have a fixed supply. In fact, uh, a number of the newer projects are designed to kind of be similar and have an inflation scheme. Mm. And also inverse as well, there's projects designed to um, be deflationary. Um, we've, we've got a couple of here um, around, did you guys stay up to watch that Ethereum 2.0 launch? <laughs> Huh? Uh, we actually spoke about this yesterday in our, our market, update. market update that yeah. goes out every Wednesday afternoon to our members. Um, so one of those cryptocurrencies is Ethereum, and it's one of the more popular ones uh, alongside Bitcoin. And it's, um, the great thing about cryptocurrency is it can evolve and it can develop over time as well. So one of the properties we, uh, we looked at earlier on when we had that, that matrix up, was about how Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrency is programmable. And one of those projects, Ethereum, recently went through an upgrade. What was really noteworthy about this piece is the way these upgrade projects, or some of them work in, in particular this case, is the whole community or the whole, whole global audience needs to participate and essentially kind of buy into the upgrade. And in Ethereum's case, we saw over 500 million US dollars worth of people investing their money or cryptocurrency worth of money yeah. um, into the Ethereum 2.0 project. So very exciting. And it just goes to show, I guess, the mass, um, I guess, now use of cryptocurrency. Mm. Uh, we've got one person here saying Bitcoin to uh, $100,000. 100000 k yeah. <laughs> Do you want to quickly touch on the price at all? Yeah, so the all-time high, um, which was... Um this week, which we noted as well, for those of you um, who would like to look later, we have mark weekly market updates, which you can watch as well through our YouTube. And um, and it was at um, 27K Australian dollars, which was so exciting. That was on, I think, late on Monday or Tuesday of this week. Um, and then it's been sitting around the, the 25 to 24K Aussie mark throughout throughout this week as well. But there is there is great potential. And, and in some of our market updates, we've actually touched on this. Um, there's some data analytics now pointing that Bitcoin could could go as obviously as high as 100k if not higher so um check out some news pieces that we've recently posted as well for more information on that yeah and again it's simple supply and demand as yeah. well but bitcoin having a fixed supply and it's slowly getting released into the ecosystem mm. where um two weeks ago we spoke about how paypal and square alone are buying up more bitcoin that's getting um, released into the ecosystem mm. so we've got two companies out of the whole world and the whole you know possible audience for bitcoin buying up more Bitcoin than it is actually getting created at the moment or uh, getting yeah. printed if you think of it in money's terms. Um, so that alone is uh, pretty crazy. And then you've got like these massive funds, you've got institutions now considering Bitcoin, you've got companies now considering moving their treasury to Bitcoin. Um, again, so it's their demand is, is um, yeah. well, we don't have a crystal ball and don't offer any financial <laughs> advice. <laughs> it's pretty exciting times in the industry at the moment. We have a few more questions. We've got one about verification, which we might, revisit um yeah. after you talk about signing up jess yeah no not a problem well let's quickly jump into mm. that as um as i know time is 
what's going rather quickly today. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to quickly step you through, some of you may have been present at one of our last webinars, so I'm just going to quickly touch on our sign-up process, which someone has mentioned some questions on as well. How to make your first deposit and your first trade. Um, we obviously have as well tax tools and transaction reporting, which I'll show you how to access those, how to quickly onboard an SMSF and then what account options we've got to then move on to how we support accountants as well. So I'll just quickly share my screen. So just give me a moment. So. All right, so welcome to Cointree. Um, this is Cointree.com. This is our homepage where you'll be able to see um, all information on us, what coins we support and what types of accounts we have as well. So feel free to check this out later on um, as there's quite a lot of information that is available. What I'm going to step you through is how to create an account. Now, um, it's as simple as selecting create account at the top right, where you'll be requested to enter in your email address and verify that email account. Um, we've had a question here today about how many points of ID and verification process. So like any financial, I guess, any financial platform, we are required to go through a know your customer process where we have to verify 100 points of ID on the individual who's setting up the account. Now, for a self-managed super fund, there's actually more information required. Um, the first step is entering in that those verification details and then we do have a second step which is providing a photo of yourself with a note and a license here. Now one of the questions here has been that that is is that necessary? Um, we like to make sure we do stand on that forefront of security for our new members. Um, so I can appreciate that that process may be a little tedious, but we are actually going through a bit of a streamline with our customer um, onboarding at the moment. So what I will say is uh, stay tuned or even reach out to me directly afterwards and I can let you know a little bit more about um, what we are looking to do moving forward too. Um, but that process is really quick to get done. We have a support team who's obviously Melbourne based, we don't outsource. So our team are online all the time where they can help you out and answer those questions um, for you as well. I'll just, sorry, I'll just quickly yeah. jump in as well. Um, we also offer account managers for customers as well, especially for accountants and their firms um, to help kind of onboard their clients if necessary to make it as yeah. easy as possible for everyone. Yeah, and I can touch on more of that um, a little bit later on as well as to what we can provide you as accountants mm. um, too. So. Once, once you have onboarded them and verified, we take you through a quick onboarding wizard where you can tailor your account, and then it will take you through to the Cointree dashboard. Um, now, as anyone's new dashboard, um, you obviously wouldn't have assets in there. So this is obviously one of our test accounts we've got available. Um, you can see here, we have a portfolio tracker on the left, which provides you with an approximate balance on what your holdings are. That's not just your AUD holdings, that's obviously all the coin holdings you would also have in your as you can see on the right, we have, um, we have the balances listed here. Now, as I'm sure as accountants, you can appreciate that, um, that the um, obviously uh, cryptocurrency is obviously volatile. So the price can change, uh, I guess, quite quickly. So that's why we always say that it is an approximate value um, at that point in time. Um, in order to make your first uh, deposit, it's as simple as selecting your wallet and go through to deposit cash. Now we have four easy deposit methods for anyone to use and I'd just like to point out as well that this is the same for a personal account as it would be for a self-made super fund account as well. Um, we have an online payment method which is just your standard online banking. We then have pay ID which is instant so that's your um, being and it's capped at that $10,000 um, per transaction but it's an instant payment method so once we verify your account it then credits the Cointree account instantly. Um, we have a cash option, which is available at one of 1300 um, retailers throughout Australia. And um, when you select this option, there is a small charge, you get presented with a QR code, and you can go down to one of those typically news agent vendors and verify yourself and use your QR code to top up um, your account right away. The last payment option is a recurring deposit method, which um, I'm sure even as accountants, you may see clients who might dollar cost average their assets. Recurring deposits can be set up on a monthly, fortnightly or weekly basis. And the way it works is once we receive that deposit from a customer, we actually place an auto buy for Bitcoin as soon as those funds are received. So um, I'm actually an example of that. I use it myself. And each time my funds are credited to my account, it gets an auto buy for Bitcoin and uh, takes all the hassle out from there. Um, so it makes it nice and easy. And um, I can obviously um, manage my assets nice and simply. I'm going to show you how to quickly do a deposit here, which is just by entering in your amount, you'll see we have a deposit summary down the bottom. 
This would break down any payment processor fees, which is applicable for the pay ID and the cash option. And, um, but it's obviously nicely outlined down the bottom there, so it's not confusing. And then we select the terms and confirm. Once this deposit set up, it will provide the user with unique details for themselves for this deposit. So it'll provide them with a BSV account number and a reference number. Those details are obviously highly important to make sure the deposit's credited. And we've got some smart automatics in the, in the background, I'll say, which keeps an eye out for these deposits and credits the accounts nice and easily. Um, so as you can see, it's really as simple as that to uh, get funds into your Cointree account. Um, we do have questions from self-managed super funds. So um, as accountants, just so you're aware, we actually verify the source of funds for every customer. Um, so um, we like to make sure that, you know, the funds come from the self-managed super fund when you're investing, as we can often get clients who can get confused and, uh, you know, uh, try to use a personal account. So our team are highly trained to make sure that the funds are coming from the appropriate accounts as well. I'll just jump to how to make your first purchase. Um, and then we can keep moving on. And feel free if we've got some other questions at the same time. Okay. Uh, I know you, we've got a question here around account types. So yep. uh, I think you spoke about them earlier on, but just to make sure we've covered off. Yeah, times. yeah. Once I've finished um, running through this, I can run through the account types mm -hmm. and how to set up the SMSF as well. Um, so, but we do have them for self managed super funds and trusts and corporate and high value. So I'll quickly touch on that in a moment. Um, in order to buy coins, we've, we've made the process really simple. So for, for us, we want to make that, that stepping into cryptocurrency easy for anyone. And um, our buy coins is really straightforward. You can enter in however much you'd like to buy in Australian dollars and then select any of our over 130 coins. Shane touched on before that there are over there are thousands of uh, altcoins and cryptocurrencies available. And um, we obviously go through a, a review process when we add them through to our platform. Today, I'll just select Bitcoin as it's our everyone's most uh, common uh, coin here. And then you'll get to see our breakdown. So I'm sure as accountants, you'd like to know exactly how this data gets, I guess, provided to the member afterwards. And, and I'll be able to show you that in a moment with transactions and what's available. Um, you'll see there's an order amount. There is a small fee for the trade, um, which is 0.9% for the standard accounts. And then it'll show you how much Bitcoin that you'll receive as well. When we go through and accept and confirm the terms, you'll see it's obviously really clean um, and, um, and simple. And then once that trade gets um, processed, it's complete and we can actually view the details through the transaction screen. I'll just jump across to transactions now. Now, some of you may have seen this in one of our last demonstrations, but I'll just quickly touch on what options are available as it's highly important. Um, not all exchanges provide this as well. So we provide five different export options. We have an order export, a list of transactions for customers. So every transaction, be it a deposit, a, a trade, it could be sort of buy, a sell. We have all of those available and they're all, um, all available in a, in a CSV or PDF. Then we have holding statements. So um, we have monthly holding statements available, which provide evaluation of the assets at that point in time and what assets were held. And um, we have invoices available also for every activity on the account. And then we have the BGL export file, which Stephen and I will also touch on later on as well. But we do have a unique integration with Simple Fund 360, where any customers of ours can simply download this file, provide it to you as an accountant, and you can import that into Simple Fund 360 and their transactions will come through. But we'll touch on more of that later. What I'll bring you back to, and I'll just see if we've got any other Yeah, we've actually questions. got quite a lot of questions that might be relevant. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, with the auto buy, is that a direct debit? Yeah, so the way the way it works is it's not a direct debit. You actually set up a, a recurring deposit from your bank account or from the nominated bank account. So we don't debit an account. It's something that the, the customer would need to set up to pay Cointree directly and get a reference number. And that gets set up through their banking and then we'll receive the payment from there. So we don't do direct debits. Mm. Uh, we've got a question around the buyer price. So can you nominate the buyer price? The way we work is a bit... Um, we actually, our platform wraps up a lot of complexity. So we we, uh, we quote real-time live market prices that gets updated every second or so yeah. um, at the best price that we can actually achieve globally. So we actually tap into a global net liquidity network as opposed to most other similar platforms yeah. that just kind of trade within their national user base, I suppose. 
uh, because we're tapping into a global uh, liquidity pool, we are able to kind of quote um, pretty pretty competitive prices. Yeah. Um, and yeah. as such, we don't uh, we don't really allow people to nominate the price just because we're always trying to pro provide the best price uh, at any given moment. Uh, let's jump to the top here. I'm just trying to find stuff relevant to the trading. Uh, in the weekly no, no, no. account types, uh, how safe and secure is it to leave cryptocurrency in your exchange? Uh, okay, I'll give it that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so we've been around since 2013 and uh, security is one of our top priorities. Uh, we've built the platform to be uh, yeah. to meet all the best practices in terms of like bank grade encryption using uh, NSA level encryption as well um, for securing uh, all the prior, all the really sensitive data too. Yeah. Um, as a rule of thumb though, if you're dealing with any uh, large amount of cryptocurrency, it's always great. And one of the benefits of cryptocurrency is that you're in control of it. So yeah. we do encourage people, if you're, if you're holding on to crypto for a long time, to store it on a hardware wallet, which is, um, which is uh, a device that you can get for about 100 or 150 dollars these days and it uh, provides a lot of security and I guess peace of mind that you have your coins yourself. Um, so while we make it as easy and as safe for people to store and hold and trade cryptocurrency, um, just the general rule of thumb of all exchanges and trading is yeah. to, if you're, uh, if you're holding on to it long term, to, to take it into your own hands essentially. Yeah. Um, and we're more than happy to um, help you with that process. You can call up our team or talk to an account manager yep. um, where we can explain how that process works. Mm -hmm. um, will country be looking to add decentralized finance style services to their offering, uh, integrating with protocols such as Compound or Aave, um, particularly attractive for investors? So uh, for people who aren't familiar, one of the types of cryptocurrencies is decentralized finance uh, projects. Yeah. And these are really exciting in itself. Like I guess traditionally, uh, Lending and finance is limited towards, uh, I guess, you know, just barriers of physicality, essentially, but being all digital, um, decentralized finance has opened up um, a whole new world of possibilities. And we have seen some uh, exciting projects such as June Finance now worth even more than yeah. Bitcoin, uh, 30 or $40,000 at times, yeah. uh, which is pretty incredible uh, given how new these tokens are. So these are kind of the new, uh, the new, the new thing to get familiar with uh, in 2020. Yeah. Uh, in terms of are we supporting, we, we support some uh, De DeFi or decentralized uh, yeah. uh, projects and tokens, uh, and it's just part of the ongoing suite of different types of cryptocurrencies that we offer to our members. Yeah. In one of our most recent updates, probably about a month or so ago, if you haven't jumped back through our blog as well, we've actually got a list of all the new tokens and coins we added. We added over about 30 so yeah. new coins and some of them being the USDT um, and also Uniswap and there's a few others that are, fit into those categories as well. So, um, but if you need more information too, we'll always be happy to help on those later on. Yeah, um, so we've got a question about withdrawal. Can you withdraw crypto onto your own device? Yeah, yeah. So like Shane touched on when it's uh, either a hardware wallet or even another online wallet, we support the withdrawals for Bitcoin, Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash for standard accounts. And then we have the ability for you to be able to withdraw other altcoins as well based on your, your tier of account. So yes, that answer is yes, you can do that. And we actually have quite a lot of articles as well on how to help you through that too. Um, and our support team are available as well if you do encounter any, any other questions on it. Okay, great. I've got a couple of more just general ones around pricing. So how does Bitcoin's halving affect the price? Uh, so for those unfamiliar with how Bitcoin is released into the ecosystem, every four years, the amount of Bitcoin um, generated by the mining network is halved essentially. And this eventually gets to, a, I guess, a bit of a, a curve that slows over time to a point where there's, uh, we reach a point where there's no more release into the ecosystem. And it's all mathematic, ma mathematical. So we know that absolutely there can't ever be any more than 21 million Bitcoin uh, entering the ecosystem. In terms of how these uh, events that occur every four years affects the price, historically, we've seen a bit of a, a spike a couple of months following the, the event. So we saw a halving, um, I think it was about maybe four or five months ago now, yeah. it was earlier this year. Yeah. And I guess, again, you could say we've seen that similar trend emerge where the price is now rising. Um, so in terms of how it affects the price, uh, there's some theories that say, um, well, everyone's aware of it now, uh, mm. since it's occurred for three or four cycles, so this time will be different, but we're kind of seeing a similar pattern emerge. 
if there's some in general, do we want to hold on to them until the end? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's jump. Let's leave some of these for the end. Yeah, I'll just jump through how to quickly set up an account because time's going very fast mm -hmm. today, um, and I and everyone's questions are fantastic as well. So if we can't get to them all as well, we're happy to happy to respond later on as well. Um, I'm just going to quickly touch on how to set up a, a self managed super fund and 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 uh, one of the one of the um, members who who reached out before one of the attendees mentioned about the sign up process. So. With a self-managed super fund, we have a different process. So all of our standard accounts go through the, the online verification. However, when you set up a self-managed super fund and, and we've got information on it, obviously on our website as well with some how to set it up, but I'm just gonna show you the form that we require because um, it's something that's been of interest as to what details we need. Um, so obviously these are standard details as you can see um, being the, the type of trust and this is all available on the website as well. Um, all the details for all the beneficiaries. So that's actually providing certified documents of their like passport, driver's license. So that's how we actually obtain their identification. So there isn't the need for the selfie photo and things like, like that. We actually, we actually obtain the identification when it's provided as part of this application and then we use that to verify the account. Um, it is, you can set it up obviously, self made super fund, trust, however the details are obviously set up through the trust deed and I'm sure as accountants and, and obviously we don't provide the financial advice but as accountants I'm sure you're all aware that obviously their trust deed and investment strategy needs to be updated appropriately. Um, so we, we request um, identification documents and also copies of that trust deed as well um, because our team go through that process and obviously verify all members um, just to make sure that obviously you know they can be onboarded appropriately. Um, once this form gets submitted our team typically can get this done really within one to two business days typically on the same day um, they're, they're very quick and any questions they'll be able to come back to to the end to the individual who's applying um, so as long as all the information is provided and you can just upload the details electronically um, that that gets processed right away and we actually can set up the account for them so we can actually set up the account get it all going and then just give them access once it's done and then they set up their own password and things like that so it's quite an easy process um, to, to be able to get that going what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to swap back to um, to Jeevan now your face there. Thanks, Jeeves. All right, just to finally touch on account options, um, and you can keep this slide up, that's fine. Um, the account options we have available, like I mentioned, obviously quite clear for self-managed super funds. All of our accounts, when they're set up, it is set up as an individual account. And then we do have the option to upgrade that to a high value trader. So some individuals, and, and you might be processing tax returns for individuals as well, they, um, we have that process where they go through a bit of extended, extended review um, to be able to apply to trade all the way up to, you know, over a million or so dollars if they like. Um, and we set that up accordingly. And we also have corporate accounts because we have quite a lot of Australian businesses who purchase crypto cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin. And same thing, there's an application form for that as well, where we verify the business and, and all its details too. Um, so, so that's the account type set up. Hopefully I've been able to answer those few questions quickly. Um, in regards to what we provide, I'll, I'll summarize this for you all as well. We, we, we're here to help yourselves and also your clients understand cryptocurrency and what's required. So um, we, what we have available for accountants is um, we actually have an education and, and training sessions that will actually be tailored to your organisation. So we are, um, we have a team of account managers and, and, and also Shane and myself who, um, who are actively involved in really introducing that education to your practice and so you can understand what an exchange looks like how it works and if you want to understand the basics of cryptocurrency we can provide a tailored training program for for your for your team so they can understand um, and we also have account managers that are available too so we're one of the only exchanges who have um phone support which might seem which might seem i guess unique uh might sound funny being uh, i guess in the accounting industry but a lot of exchanges don't have that level of contact and we really want to have that personal contact with yourself and your clients because it's really important to bridge that bridge that gap. Um, so as part of today's session, which I'll jump to um, at the end as well, we've, we've got an offer where we'll be able to provide consultations, um, you know, for your firm or yourselves, um, or even um, SMSFs as individuals too. Um, and um, be becoming a preferred partner, we get asked all the time if, um, if there's certain accounting firms who, who do support 
or, or have, I guess, want to be um, uh, a reference point for uh, helping with cryptocurrency investments with self-managed super funds and also how to set up a self-managed super fund too. We get a lot of individuals who are curious and um, so if you'd like to become a preferred partner um, and part of that list where we can um, find someone in the right location um, for a certain member, um, please reach out to us at the end of the session as well. And we'd love to get you signed up and we can, um, yeah, chat to you more about it then. Um, so that's my quick intro, I guess. Did you have anything else to add on that one? Uh, no, no, I'm just looking at the questions. We have quite a few. <laughs> We're probably not going to be able to get through them yeah. all. Um, all right, Jeevan, on to you now. Well, so as, yeah, as Jess and Shane both touched on, obviously we have the, the data fed export from Cointree that does come into Simple Fund 360. So again, regardless of the entity type, whether it's a self-managed super fund or if you're using Simple Invest, which now obviously caters for the management of uh, companies and trusts, you're able to import that file in. So that'll automatically create all the buyers and sell transactions within Simple Fund 360 for you. Um, it'll automatically obviously uh, create the correct account there in the chart of accounts. Um, and we'll obviously, um, the year-end process will automatically go through and um, generate the correct capital gains within the system. So that's obviously the most important thing from the tax perspective. Um, there was a question earlier about a daily price feed. So it's not something we have within Simple Fund 360 um, at the moment, but it's something we are looking for, I guess, in the first half there of 2021. So do look out for that. And that'll um, something we might be able to partner obviously with Cointree with. Um, looking over to, oops. Um, so I suppose back to Jess there with your, I suppose, how you, I guess your, your offer at the moment and how you can, I guess, help today's participants. Yeah, so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with BGL webinars. Um, so you will all receive an email, um, you know, within a few days um, once uh, once our webinar is concluded with these contact details. So don't panic if you don't get them. But we are offering everyone today with a free 30 minute consultation with our team um, to be able to find out what your needs or requirements are and where we can help you with that. So um, please reach out um, and um, and let us know um, if there's anything that you need, because we'd be more than happy to help and, and, and work alongside you. All right, excellent. I suppose in content, that's all we have today. So we've got, uh, I suppose, a lot of questions coming through. So I guess, as Jess mentioned, we might be able to tackle them all, but um, might be able to sort of get to as many as possible. Um, I suppose any of the questions that are input, um, Jess and Shane might be able to get back to you, I suppose, after today's webinar as well, because we do have um, all those questions that have come through. Um, so I guess, guys, which ones do you want to tackle, I guess? Um, so there's a question here around GST. So is there GST in the fee? Uh, and does it get fed through to Simple Fund uh, 360? Just. Um, oh, <laughs> I was <laughs> waiting for Jeevan yeah, to answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, just, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that comes through. I was going to say if it does. Yeah, it, it does. does. Okay. Yeah. I, I know the answer. I was, <laughs> okay. I was testing you both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Okay. So uh, in terms of how GST works, is it's not on the trade itself, but we do charge a commission, which is, uh, starts at 0.9% and yeah. can go down with more trading volume. Um, and there is GST on the commission itself. And yes, that does get uh, put through to all the exports and also through to Simple, Simple Fund 360 as well. Yeah, if you'd like a sample as well of some of the reports and information we provide too, we can we can provide you with some of that as well. So reach out to us because we can show you what's on the invoices, holding statements, things like that. Yeah, there was a question. Uh, we've got a couple of questions. What type of reporting you offer, you know, doesn't contain tax, uh, taxable gains and capital gains information, so. Um, so I suppose that might be something that uh, we can reach out and provide. Yeah, we can reach out and yeah provide more information on that. Yeah, no, that's uh, not a problem. Because, yeah, our reporting is just obviously the invoices and um, the CSV um, export. And then it's obviously got those those holding statements as well, which outline some general information. Um, it doesn't touch too much into CGT and whatnot, but we can, um, we're more than happy to, I guess, yeah, talk about that later on. Yeah. There was a question I saw before around, um, yeah, the profit, profit and loss and working out the tax obligations. I know you guys were just talking about it, but I kind of missed it because I was reading some questions. Should we elaborate? So we integrate with a lot of tax tools, which yeah. you might have just explained. Okay, great. No, no, yeah, no. I didn't touch on who with. So yeah, we do have other integrations. So um, obviously Simple Fund 360 is unique being that self-made super fund side, but our, our information can also be easily imported into some online tax tools. Um, and um, we've got we've got several partnerships um, with online to crypto tax tools, mm. and they then provide a breakdown of that information. Um, and we do have some information on that as well in our support center, um, but for, whom asked that question as well, please reach out and I can direct you in the right spot as well as to those um, those um, authorised providers as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 
Yeah, there, there's some other providers in Australia that uh, kind of boast that they provide some some tax integration or are able to help with that, but those, those are estimates at best. Yeah. Um, and we found that these kind of these dedicated services that are designed purely around helping you work out your capital gains yeah. um, are a lot more effective. Yeah, and they're quite cost effective as well. So, yeah. yeah. We've got a couple of questions around staking uh, and invest that like earning interest off cryptocurrencies. So I guess over the last year or so, we've also seen emerge projects that reward people who hold their particular tokens and that's called staking. So it's kind of like a, if I hold some, I'll just say Bitcoin, but Bitcoin doesn't do it. If I hold some uh, some other coin, I might get a little bit kind of kind of drip fed, drip fed to me over time, mm -hmm. uh, potentially. And also, I guess, staking, which is kind of investing in other projects and uh, and other, yeah, essentially projects as well. We actually support all sorts of different types. And there's also airdrops as well, which is a similar concept. So there's different ways that different projects try to entice like engagement and, and just use of their particular uh, tokens. Uh, we support a handful of those and we've got a, a support article if you dive into our support centre yes. where we touch on exactly um, what tokens we support for staking and air drops and forks um, and also I guess how that gets uh, passed on to our members over time as well. Yeah. If there's any questions feel free to just give us a call as well and we can answer any specific questions. Yeah. Um, okay so can you provide information on the electronic address of cryptocurrencies? in the reports. Oh, I thought I knew what the question was until I said, until I read in the reports, because I thought it was a question around what is a Bitcoin address. We, I was gonna say in some of the reports, we do have the address listed. So yeah. there's an um, oh, okay. order export. We do have the wallet address of the sent address um, in part of the report yeah. as well. Um, so you can have that available um, in one of the exports. Yes, if that's what, I believe that's what the question's asking. Oh, maybe it's asking if we do provide it. Okay, yeah. uh, we'll look into that for you, Linda, and we'll, um, if it's not there, then we would provide it. I would yeah. have thought it's already there. Yes, yeah. Um, I have some clients that trade Bitcoin on a daily basis. Do you have reporting for clients like that? Uh, so short answer is uh, yes, definitely. We, all of our exports provide all information in real time. And we also have uh, invoices for uh, every single trade. Mm -hmm. And we've got our daily portfolio tracker so, so that um, these types of people or basically any, all members can work out how their portfolio is performing over time. Um, so we support our daily traders just as well as we support people who like to just buy and hold. Yeah, and we are looking to enhance some new features for, for 2021. So certainly keep an eye out as um, we've, um, we've got some exciting, I guess, uh, features on the way, which is great. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to work out if there's any, there's some specific questions that we might just get direct back to people on. I'm just trying to see if there's anything here. I think that might be about it. Uh, and uh, there's just a question around how do we, in our weekly recaps, how do we talk about what indicators do we use for analysis? So um, we actually received a strategic investment from a, a data analytics company uh, from Silicon Valley earlier this year. And it's yeah. really exciting for our future roadmap for all our members and, and all traders really. Mm -hmm. They are, uh, their bread and butter is analyzing the crypto markets based on painted data. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking forward over time to releasing kind of indicators and more thorough analysis. And, and even though we never offer any financial advice predictions um, over time to our members as well to help, you know, with so many cryptocurrencies, if anything, at least that's a good uh, starting point for, for mm -hmm. highlighting projects that might be worthwhile in any trader's time. Uh, I think that's probably all of the questions, yeah. Yeah, we've got a little over time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all the questions we have for today. So I, I guess uh, for the questions we couldn't get to, Jess and Shane will get back to you at a later stage and we've got a, a list there of all the questions. People. So uh, Jess and Shane, thank you for your time today and thank you for all the attendees as well. Uh, we will, As Jess mentioned, we will send an email to all the attendees today with details of both the offer, um, copy of the slides and a, a link to the recording as well. So you will get, I guess, all that information sent to you automatically. So thank you everyone for your time today. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks everyone and thanks Jaden. No worries. Bye everyone. Bye. See ya.